Bonjour and welcome to Spa Francorchamps, one of the most iconic motorsport circuits in the world. Now this is round four of ELMS and we are past the halfway point of the calendar year. But what about 2024? The calendar has just been revealed and there are some new additions. We're starting off in Barcelona yet again for the prologue and the opening round of the season before heading on to France in May, having a little break in June for the 24 hours of Le Mans and then in July we'll be heading to Imola. Spa will return on the calendar in August before we head to a brand new track in Mugello, Italy for the first time in ELMS history. The season will then conclude in Portimao with a night race for the very first time. So 2024 is looking incredibly exciting, but staying on theme in 2023, let's go have a chat with United Autosports. They are the king of Spa. Now let's take a masterclass and find out why. Spa is in the middle of the Arden Forest, so it's quite unique. There's there's not many other racetracks in the world where you have such such amazing landscapes. Hi, I'm Phil Hansen. I race the 22 United Autosports in ELMS and LMP2. Uh, yeah, I've won four times in ELMS in five five years. Uh, you know, a good race engineer is only one piece of the puzzle. Obviously it's a very big piece of the puzzle, um, but you need everything to fall into place to win. Um, here in particular, maybe more than other tracks, um, you've got changing weather, weather conditions. The first year we won it was actually completely wet. Um, the other years it's been dry, but every, every race weekend I've been here, we've always had some rain at some point. Um, you need strong driver lineup, you need faultless pit stops, you need a good race strategy. 30 seconds. The engine. Yeah, copy that, Phil. Still good, lad. Early C1, 300 of clear of Jakobsen. Gary's he's as hungry as I am and very competitive, so in that respect, we align very well because we're both searching for wins and we have no interest in finishing second, I think, which is kind of crucial. Um, I'm really happy with the car. It's amazing the difference in that step of rear wing. Like, it just changes the entire car in all the mid-speed corners. And then obviously there was a huge gain in Phil one. The crew one's really good. You know, and he's he's also the master of this track. You know, he's fantastic. Well, I'm not sure we quite the king of Spa, but yeah, we always seem to, to go well at Spa. I mean, it's a fantastic circuit. It's somewhere that everybody loves to come. I think a lot of the modern circuits we race on these days are quite boring. They they don't really have many much character or undulations. Uh, Spa is a very technical track, so if you want, we can we can go for a track walk and I can show you three of my favorite spots on the track. To be a king here at Spa, first you have to, to manage your rouge. It's not the most difficult corner, if I'm, if I'm honest, but, um, but it's difficult to make sure you scrub the least amount of speed possible. Um, and it's also very difficult with traffic. I think when you see a GT9 and P3 in a head, um, it's difficult sometimes to really manage the gap and, and ensure that you're flat throughout this whole section. So we're at Puan. I'm stood up right now, but obviously this is a different viewpoint to what I normally see. You know, we're much lower down. We're, uh, we're approaching and this is sort of the amount that we see in the car. To be honest, from when you enter the corner, you're really only looking at the apex because if you miss the apex by half a meter, you're really struggling with the understeer. Because it wouldn't be spa without a bit of rain, I guess. So turn 14 
is essentially the last corner before you remain flat all the way to the final bus stop, the last corner. If you arrive unstable, searching for, searching for grip, you could quite easily delay your power application and lose a huge amount of time all the way down that, that area I just spoke of. It's probably a good 10, 15 seconds worth of lap, um, which could be compromised or you could you know, gain from just depending on this one corner. Do you think we will be uh, the king of Spa this weekend? <laughs> I don't know if I'm fully on board with, uh, with the cat's phrase yet. Maybe if I win one more time, I might be a bit more on, on board with it. So, um, so let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe by the end of the weekend, I'll feel like the king of Spa. <laughs> Now, Spa is a very hard and demanding circuit for the drivers with lots of characteristics that can make it very difficult. But it is not just a challenge for the drivers this weekend, but also the race organisation. Now, let's dive a little deeper into Lisa Weishard, the race director assistant. <laughs> So it's half past seven and we are in Spa Concorchon for the ELMS 4 hour of Spa. On Friday we also have a big rehearsal on our side in race control which is the safety car exercise for the safety car driver, the marshals, the race control to train on the safety car procedure to make sure that we are comfortable in deploying such a safety procedure if something happened during the race. I think this is one of my favorite tracks of the world. As soon as you're getting in the circuit, it's like an envelope around it and you know that you're in a kind of legend place. Hope you can all read us loud and clear. We are about nine minutes to start FT1. Please connect to this car so that we can contact you and we will come back to the frequency before the session starts. Thank you. My name is Lisa Vecha and I'm a sporting delegate at the Automobile Club de l'Ouest and I'm also assisting Eduardo in race control for the ELMS. And a gentle reminder to the driver, so let's keep this between the two white lines. Spa is complicated with weather. <laughs> Most of the time we have a complicated weather which makes a complicated race. It's always very competitive because it's at the end of the season so we have the big fights for the championship, so everybody is coming with the knife uh, in the teeth, if I can say. It's very intense, let's say. The track is demanding, so we very often have a lot of contact, of accident to deal. So you have to think fast and to take decision fast, and you have no time to say, okay, I'm stressed about this situation. Okay, you need to find a solution now, and to be as fair as possible, to make sure that the drivers and the marshal are safe, so this is your, your main goal during, during a race weekend. I think the part I love the most in the job is being part of the team. It's like a team in the paddock. One person alone, one driver alone cannot do our race. They need a team manager, they need mechanics, they need engineers, they need travel coordinator, all that stuff. It's the same on our side. One person alone cannot run a race. There is a lot of confidence in between the team. The team is leading by Eduardo, of course. He has like more than 40 years of uh, racing behind him. Yannick Dalmas won four times Le Mans, so he's basically one of the legends as well. We have a safety car driver and we are all um, enjoying and taking advantage of everyone's qualities to try to minimize our default, basically. I am super proud to be part of the race control team of ELMS and I'm super proud to be part of the ELMS paddock. time for qualifying now but just before that we're gonna head inside one of these teams a very famous one GMV Motorsport right. check them to uh, 24 yeah. degrees yeah 24 24 degrees car outside please two and a half minutes degree Three, 
Three, two, taxi be green. And then nicely, first thing wheeze in there as well. Long wheeze, some side button, back to low. Turn five, apex speed, 10% higher. Two minutes to the checkered flag, one more lap. Turn eight, where you are now, leave a gap between brake and throttle, reduce the power under the P3 at the moment, four tenths to get P2. Welcome Martin, thanks for coming. P3, now they're really improving, so it looks pretty solid. Right, isn't it? Third, third's oh, good. That's good. That's good for the start of the race. Fight, right? Probably the best I could have done. I had a good next lap, but then I got track limits on a rouge. So, uh, yeah, I think P3 is okay. I won't necessarily be looking for how I can go faster, but how I can play it maybe a little bit safer, just so that we stay away from track limits. is just about to get underway but thousands of fans are swarming the grid after meeting their heroes up close and personal in the autograph session a chance to see the machinery at first hand with free engines thousands are enjoying a great day out in beautiful arden weather In LMGTE, Ryan Hardwick has clinched his first pole position with the number 16 Proton Competition Porsche. In LMP3, Manuel Espirito Santo put his number 8 Team Virage machine on pole. In LMP2 Pro-Am, Sally Yolich claimed his fourth pole position of the season with the number 34 Racing Team Turkey entry. And in LMP2, it's Alex Lynn who has taken the overall pole position for Algarve Pro with the number 25 machine.
15 seconds. Green flag for the start of the formation lap, the first formation lap for the four hours of Spa. Here we go, ready to race in Spa. The charge down to La Source. Kevin Simpson, the pole man, covers off Marino Sato in the United Auto Sports car. Lock ups behind on the inside, trouble. That's the Panis car. So that is Manuel Maldonado from the outside of row three. He cuts at the inside. There's three or four cars. United are off. That's the 22 car, Marino Sato. They can't believe it. That happened to them on the first corner in the Le Mans Cup race yesterday. And there is the battle for second. So that's into Europol's Rui Andrade. We're right behind, or two cars behind. Racing Team Turkey, Sally Jolic. And in between the grey, cool racing car, that's Vladislav Lomko. But the pole man, Kiffin Simpson for Algar Pro, has put space between him and his rivals. He made a good start. And he survived the dramas. Duquesne have not. That's Rene Binder from fourth on the grid. And in the gravel, I think, was racing Spirit of Le Mans, Jacques Wolf. The battle for second is well alight, isn't it? Lead Pro-Am car is the red racing team Turkey machine in fourth. There's your race leader. But that early gap surely is going to be compromised. Looks like we're almost guaranteed to have a safety car here on lap one in beautiful sunny conditions. A little bit of over ambition causing carnage. It is Jack Wolf, the 31 car in the gravel well. Watch Manuel Maldonado on the inside, cuts to the inside, locks up, clatters into Paul Lafargue, the IDEC car, who then hits Rene Binder. Racing Spirits of Le Mans car goes off. The United car spinning there. Now, did he have contact from behind? Not sure. But Maldonado certainly triggered a big first corner pileup. And the United car in the gravel getting hit from behind by Racing Spirit of Le Mans. Then the 22 car manages to drive out. Well, from behind, on row three, Maldonado cuts to the inside behind into Europol. But as the road drops away, he's already locked up, can't stop, just hits whatever's in his path. Disaster. And there's the reaction in the Panis garage. They cannot believe it. It starts out as quite good thinking from Maldonado to cut from the outside to the inside, but then he locks up. He's not alone, but he takes out three cars. He did hit the United car. And then Jack Wolf from behind runs into the back of the United car unsighted. And that actually triggers the 22 car out of the way. On board with Sally Jolic. Watch Maldonado, and Jolic goes outside to try and avoid the drama, which he does, and follows into Europol and Cool Racing down the hill. And that's his experience paying off. After nearly 20 minutes, the safety car is pulling off. Safety car in the pits, the track has gone green. No overtaking before the line, please. So here we go once more, Kiffin Simpson for Algar Pro will get a chance to lead a live green flag racing lap. Away he goes into your pole in second place, Rui Andrade with the green and yellow. Then the cool racing entry, Vladislav Lomko, they started fifth and seventh racing Team Turkey. The top pro-am car, the red machine in fourth place overall. He started in eighth ahead of the 24 Nielsen car, they started in 12th. Here's the battle for fifth in LMP3. Nick Adcock with the orange nose of Alexander Bukantsov for DKR, trying to go the long way around the outside, and he does. That was a bold move, wasn't it? But he got a great run out of La Source. Kiffin Simpson leading in LMP2. In 11th overall is car 11. Matt Bell for Euro International leading in LMP3. And Rene Binder for Duquesne in the pit lane after that first lap encounter. Pole sitters leading in LMP2 and LMP2 Pro-Am. And in GTE, there is the pole sitter, Ryan Hardwick in the Porsche, ahead of this all Aston battle. GMB's Jens Muller and Arno Robin in the 77 car from TF Sport. Their little battle is just helping Ryan Hardwick, that turquoise-nosed Proton Competition Porsche, to start to build an advantage. Down into Eau Rouge comes the battle for second place in LMP3. Adrian Keeler in the cool racing number 17 car under real pressure. Eric Trio with a good exit from Eau Rouge. And up the long power sapping Kemmel straight. He's in the slipstream. 
Can't afford to go too early, but now he does make the move. He's got the race leader right behind. Can he go around the outside? Yes, he does. Had the grip on the racing line. That's a good move. Now maybe he can set off and try and chase down the class leader, Matt Bell, for Euro International. Kevin Simpson racing away at the front of the field. Things looking good right now for the pole sitters, Algarve Pro. Duncan Cameron in a spirit of race Ferrari under pressure for fifth place in GTE on board with Michael Fassbender. Here he comes and he got a good exit out of Eau Rouge Redion and he picks up the toe now. Now watch the Ferrari come slowly back towards us. Is he close enough to try and move? I don't think he is. He doesn't think he is either. But Fassbender is the better of the Proton Porsches. And this is just at the beginning of the lap, trying to set up that move. But watch what happens in the background here. Jack Wolf, the 31 car that was in the gravel on lap one, visiting it again. Out of Redion comes to battle the second place. Tom Van Rompuy with a great run through Eau Rouge. Makes the move very early on the Nielsen car. The Belgian colours are in front. Rodrigo Sales now down to third, just ahead of Francois Perodo in the 83 AF Corsa car. Into the pit lane comes into Europol. And that car coming in from second place. Rui Andrade having a good start, avoided the dramas, kept his nose clean, kept his pace up. Clean of the screen, fuel. He'll stay on the same tyres and rejoin the race. No driver change. Pro-Am leader is in Sally Jolic for Racing Team Turkey run by the TF Sport crew. And again, he will stay in, has not yet completed his minimum drive time. They're gonna do it all in one go, clearly. A double stint then for the Turkish driver. And notice the earth wire clipped onto the wheel there to stop sparks while they're refueling, igniting the tank. Here comes the battle for eighth in Pro-Am in LMP2. Cool Racing versus Dragon Speed. Oh, goodness me. Alex Kwani trying to go down the inside of the LMP3 car there, around into Eau Rouge, had a major heart in the mouth moment. Look how much ground he's lost. Henrik Hedman comes right alongside to the Dragon Speed car. This is like taking candy off a baby. He had so much more speed coming out of Eau Rouge and up this long hill. But hats off to Alex Kwani for handling that. That was a major moment. Up the Kemmel Straight with Marino Sato in the number 22 United Auto Sports car. After spinning in turn one, that's no cycle to the top of the pile. And the team's number 23 LMP3 car won, having started from the pit lane in the Le Mans Cup race the previous day. Algar Pro are second. Here's the battle for third, looking back for Michael Fassbender. Proton, the 99 car, Giorgio Roda leading in Pro-Am, just ahead of Inter Europol's Rui Andrade. They are third and fourth overall at the moment, heading towards the end of the first hour of four here in Spa-Francorchamps. Working their way through the GTE battle, that's Duncan Cameron's Spirit of Race Ferrari just in front. Is this an opportunity for Rui Andrade to capitalise? Down the hill they come, Andrade looking for a way by Giorgio Roda. The Angolan driver versus the Italian. And Andrade with a great slingshot out of Eau Rouge Redion as he crests the rise and up the long Kemmel straight. He's perfectly poised in the toe. He'll have to pull out now and send it early down the inside. He'll be off the racing line, but he has track position and he goes through to third. And the 47 cool racing car is right behind them as well. He's looking to try and move up. Oh, trouble for United, that's 21, that's their Pro-Am car, Brazil's Daniel Schneider, and he's hit the wall, he's lost his rear wing. Luckily for him, the full course yellow means everybody is down to 80 kilometers an hour, so he can get going with no real danger. But what happened, what caused that? Well, there he is right behind the 51A of Corsa Ferrari. Looks like he misjudged the rate of approach, had to take a really dramatic avoiding action and snapped sideways into the barriers. The full course yellow allows the marshals to work in safety. Riding a ball with Marina Sato in the 22 United Auto Sports car. This is the battle for third. Vladislav Lomko ahead for Cool Racing. Not a bad recovery at all from Sato after that first corner spin. 
He got tagged from behind by Manuel Maldonado in the big collision at the beginning and has recovered strongly. Attacking Lomko now for third place. Big lockup coming down into the bus stop and just avoids running into the cool racing car. No, he doesn't. Hits him at the apex. Well, that was clumsy from Sato and that may well be referred to the stewards for a penalty. Not a great day for United. Let's take a look again. He gets in a little bit too hot into the bus stop, runs out wide and then just tries to drill it up the inside. But the door was never going to stay open. He comes in from Vladislav Lomko's blind spot. The cool racing driver can't see the United car, but Sato can see him and still goes for a gap that's not there. Now that is trouble in the pit lane entry. That's Jimmy Bruni. So that is the Proton car. The 99 machine started by Giorgio Roda. For some reason, it is stopped in the pit entry road. So they're backing up a tow vehicle to get him out of the way because the crew can't come out that far to work on the car, which would include pushing it out of the way. Well, any hope they had of a strong finish may be going west now, even if the car returns to the pit lane, they'll have lost a lot of time. And anybody who needs to pit now is going to be in trouble. There's Jonas Reed, the third driver of that car, Christian Reed's young son. And the link, of course, is that Christian Reed owns and runs Proton Competition, the team with which he started GT racing. And he is racing the 77 GTE Porsche for the team here. And that's more trouble. That's Nielsen's Tony Wells bailing out. That's right at the bottom of the pit lane. So he's come to a grinding halt on the exit of the pit lane or into Eau Rouge and has been pulled back into your pole, Juri Andrade coming into the pit lane. This is for his second stop to hand over the car to Ollie Caldwell. And still the Proton 99 car is blocking the pit entry. Now, into your pole among our first stoppers last time round, but that means everyone else is due to come in as well. Racing Team Turkey, Pro-Am leader from fourth place overall, Sally Olic handing over to Charlie Eastwood. There goes Juri Andrade as Ollie Caldwell slips in. Both these teams having a good run so far. United Auto Sports 21 car, that's Andy Merrick, and here comes one Pablo Montoya around the outside at Lake Comp. Great move for the Dragon Speed driver. He's done that once or twice before, hasn't he, in much quicker cars. Up to the bus stop comes the battle of the third in Pro-Am LMP2, and this is Nathaniel Berton being dive-bombed by Matthias Besch. Now, they have raced against each other for many years. And the DKR car runs out very wide indeed. Can't take advantage of that. So Nielsen's Matthias Besch will feel aggrieved. Tiny little bit of contact there. And down the inside, Besch is going to have to attack again. But strictly speaking, Nick Berton should not have regained an advantage by running off the track there, exiting the bus stop. Door handle to door handle into a rouge. Well held, both gentlemen. Excellent stuff. That's what you get when you put top pros into top cars. Top racing. Besh is in front, but look at Berton hoovering up the slipstream. Is he going to have a go under braking? No, he's not quite got what it takes. This was the battle for fifth in GT. Michael Fassbender's Porsche. Duncan Cameron, the Ferrari, coming down the inside. Late on the brakes. Just avoids contact at the apex, but... Biffs his fellow Irishman off into the gravel on board with Fassbender. And here comes the Ferrari and here comes the gravel. Well, both survived. Fassbender not happy, but a good double stint. Quite tricky in the start to get the, the brake temperatures up, uh, especially with the cooler temperatures this morning. And obviously, I think the start reflected that. There was quite a big mess, a lot of people locking up, including myself. But luckily, managed to get a, a clean turn one. And then from there, uh, had to struggle a bit with some front uh, left uh, lockup and vibration. Uh, but yeah, clean. Um, unfortunately, when we boxed, there was a car stopped in the pit lanes. So we lost a bit of time there. But besides that, quite happy with my students. And you guys have a lot of pace. Is a podium still on the cards for you guys? Yeah, for sure. I think we're running P2 at the moment, so the car's strong. I think Jonathan showed it uh, in free practice uh, and Ollie as well. So, yeah, really confident now we can get a good result. The 99 Proton car has finally been moved out of pit lane. Trouble for JMW. The Ferrari going very slowly up the Kemmel Strait. 
And that is Martin Berry. Ooh, just a clang on the barriers after a big lose in Redion. This is the 93 at Proton Porsche, the one Michael Fassbender has driven for the first couple of stints and it is going back in the garage. They have a problem now. I wonder if that is maybe a legacy of that contact with Duncan Cameron's Spirit of Race Ferrari. Either way, never good news when the car is backed in. Safety car is out. That is because of the JMW Ferrari of Martin Berry stranded on the Kemmel Strait. Not an easy place to get to. They'll need a flatbed truck. And he looped it out of Redion, missed all of those massive tyre walls and hit the barrier. They were third in LMGTE at the time. And although the driver's side looks OK, the other side very probably isn't. Race leader in the pit lane. This is the number 22 United Autosports car of Marina Sato. But the pit lane is closed to traffic as the safety car has come out. You can only stop and take on emergency fuel. That's a five second fill. No other work at all is permitted or there will be a penalty. Also, you have to come back in again once the pit lane is open to take more service. Now, it looks as though there's a problem with Sato's belts. Maybe he misunderstood what was going to happen because they are due a driver change, but they can't do it when the pit lane is closed. So the driver helper having to get in there and do the belts up, the drivers can't even see the belts when they're tight in the car like that. And he goes off to rejoin the safety car queue. Number 25, Algarve Pro Car of James Allen leading the queue. Behind him into Europol's Oli Caldwell, Alessio Rivera for AF Corsa. Marino Sato for the 22 United Autosport team, still shown as the race leader, but they will have to stop again. They were out of sync, which is why they had to come into the pit lane behind the safety car while it was closed. So as soon as the pit lane is open, they will have to pit again, and Algarve Pro will have the lead. AF Corsa's 83 car leading in Pro-Am from Racing Team Turkey and Nielsen. Euro International number 11 still leading LMP3 from Ultimate and Cool Racing. And the Euro International car in 14th place overall. But in the GT class, it is still the number 16 Porsche that started on pole position that leads the field for Proton from the GMB and TF Sport Aston Martins. More than half the race still to go in Spa and look at the beautiful weather conditions. Could hardly be better. What a playground Spa is, especially with clear blue skies, bright sunshine, an autumnal day and bone dry running surface. So far, the only car of the 40 that started not running is the 99 Proton LMP2 Pro-Am car. Nelson Piquet Jr. on the United pit wall, racing the number 21 car with Daniel Schneider, the starting driver, and Andy Merrick. Ready to go back to green. Marina Sato, 22 United, leading the field around. Green flags, green flag. You've just seen Phil Hansen ready to take over the 22 United car that must stop now that the pit lane is open. And it will be James Allen for Algar Pro that leads them across the line. Ollie Caldwell second. We're in fourth with Charlie Eastwood. That's Alessio Rivera right in front. There are a couple of LMP3 cars in the mix as well. They'll be dispensed with fairly happily, I think. Green and yellow, Ollie Caldwell is clear of them. Alessio Rivera follows him down the inside. And then the red car of Charlie Eastwood has his nose cut off, but he'll go underneath into a rouge clear of the slower traffic with the top three right in front of him. Cool racing, so Jose Maria Lopez in the grey car trying to come around slower traffic on the grass. The 65 Panis car, the blue and red LMP2 machine that caused all the trouble in the first corner, moved out wide and put Lopez on the grass. That's a big heart in the mouth moment for the Argentine. Regular world endurance Toyota driver. And that car was spun around by the 22 United car, which has now picked up a penalty. I bet this aged Jose Maria Lopez about a decade. And Gata Rivera is 4.6. 22 car up ahead. 
22 car up ahead is Hansen, and he is nearly one lap down. The significance of the gap to Rivera with the red and white nose is that they are first and second in Pro-Am, so not really racing the yellow and green into Europol car, but the gap is about 1.6 seconds. Here is the battle for third in Pro-Am. Nathaniel Berton is third. Here comes Juan Pablo Montoya in the Dragon Speed car around the outside of Blanchimor. That is absolutely full commitment. Goodness me. And he made it look like he was passing an LMP3 car, not a pro-driven LMP2 car. Massive, massive stuff. And it's his in-lap. Of course it's his in-lap. Goodness me. Juan Pablo Montoya, he's still got the racer's edge. Coming into the pit lane, Montoya puts down a move like this. That's just insane. Oh, big trouble at the bottom of the circuit. That's the number 10 Euro International car, and that's Kay Van Berlo. Looks like he's gone off into the gravel, got spat across the road. You can see the impact mark. He's out, he's okay. That car's not racing any further, is it? Is this going to be another safety car? Nico Lapierre out of the 37 cool racing car, hands over to young Dane Malte Jakobsen. Oh, and they've timed that quite well. Safety car comes out as they are in the pit lane. So they lose a bit less time. Quite warm, the brakes, we're saying. And that is rubber pickup dropping onto the brakes, which still retain a heat of several thousand degrees, even though they're not glowing. Driver change, full tank of fuel and fresh tyres going on to the 37 cool racing car. And that little bit of uh, flame on the brakes won't worry them much. <laughs> Away he goes. Well, here's what happens to K Van Berlo, exiting campus. Runs into the gravel, spat across the road, and oh, a hard hit with the barriers. A lot of damage done to the car, but the driver is fortunately okay. Inside the final hour, we go green again. It is Malte Jakobsen for Cool Racing that leads from the 25 Algarve Pro Car, the blue and black of Alex Lynn. Red, white, and blue nose of AF Corsa's Mathieu Vaxivier. There he is flashing the headlights right behind him in fourth racing team turkey and that is louis delatraz then fifth the blue car ben hanley for nielsen and coming behind them hanley's old team dragon speed the white car sebastian montoya he's in sixth lmp3 car in the way uh, this is trouble for Mathieu of Activier. Here comes Louis Delatraz looking to go inside, has to go outside as they come up to Les Combe. Hasn't quite got enough. No, he doesn't. Wheel to wheel, they're trying to avoid the P3 car in front. It's supposed to be open if I are single to say look. I know, but the race director has mentioned you need to give the place back. That's not going to be easy because, look, Ben Hanley, the blue car, has gone by Mathieu Vaxivier and Sebastian Montoya is right there as well. So somehow Louis Delatraz in the red car has to give a place away to a car that's two behind him without losing a place to the car that's right behind him. So this is not great, is it, for Racing Team Turkey? They are battling for second in Pro-Am and the Nielsen car is also in Pro-Am. Delatraz is trying to avoid getting a penalty, so Ben Hanley comes calling around the outside and inside. Through he goes. He moves up in Pivpaf, but still, Mathieu Vaxivier is behind the red racing team Turkey car. So Louis Delatraz has got to give that spot back as well. There's the Nielsen team. That will work very well for them. They're now third overall, second in Pro-Am. Here's the AF Corsa car. And somehow Louis Delatraz has got to hope that he can let AF Corsa's Mathieu of Axivier through without Sebastian Montoya also taking advantage. He's got to do it here. He's got to guard the inside line in case Montoya comes and allow the AF Corsa car through. But here's Montoya on the inside. Is there contact? Whoa, he just opened the steering enough, I think, to avoid it. And there's the cool racing car as well, the 47 car. That's Rashed de Geras. He's seventh now looking for sixth place from Sebastian Montoya. He goes through and he is second in LMP2, not Pro-Am, so Pro if you like. 
That's a good pass. So this is the top seven all together. And Cool Racing leading in Pro-Am and second at the moment in LMP2 as well. Ooh, little bobble there as he exited Redion for Richard Tejeros. Sebastian Montoya in the tow, Tejeros towing up behind. Louis Delatraz in the Racing Team Turkey car. And Delatraz not able to get back onto terms with AF Corsa. Well, here's how Delatraz allowed the AF Corsa car to go through. But again, watch Montoya. He knows there's going to be a gap. He did get his nose in there. And again, Delatraz knew it was likely to happen, made allowance for it. Good thinking racing. And here's the initial move on Vaxivier. Delatraz complains he got pushed off wide there, but he did gain advantage, cutting the corner. Oh, trouble in the background. Somebody is off in the gravel, and that looks like it might be a big one. And that is the Nielsen car. It's 24. That's Ben Hanley, third overall, second in Pro-Am. And look at the trailer debris where he's come back from hitting the barriers. That was a big lose for Ben Hanley. You can see him moving in the cockpit, which is very good news, but this is likely to be another safety car. 37 Cool Racing in the pits having service as the safety car comes out, so they've escaped from trouble. Ben Handley jogs away to the medical car, he's okay. Less than 23 minutes remaining in the race. We go green once more. Cool Racing leading from Dragon Speed, DKR, and Algarve Pro. That's your one, two, three, four. Cool Racing also leading in LMP2. And it is still the pole sitting car from Proton Competition with the turquoise nose right there that leads in LMGTE. And look at all the close battles on track. It's a 20 minute sprint race plus one lap. Black and blue, Algar Pro, that's Alex Lynn. He's got a really good run going here on third place DKR driver Sebastian Alvarez. Hauling up the long Kemmel straight. The leaders weaving to get some heat into their tyres. But again, Louis Delatraz, this time on the inside of the AF Corsa car, trying to get by Mathieu Vaxivier. Vaxivier is east off wide, but so too Delatraz. He runs off wide, does not gain the place. So on board with Racing Team Turkey, seventh place. And only two non-Pro-Am cars in front. Oh, and another one. Somebody else has gone off. It's into Europol, and that's Jonathan Aberdeen. Well, he's gone into the barriers backwards. You can see the rear wing and the damage on the back of the car. That's going nowhere in a hurry either. We could be up for another safety car. Cool Racing's Rashid Tajiris leads from Sebastian Montoya. We do have another safety car. Well, that's a real shame for Inter Europol. It was shaping up to be a very good race from the start. And that is how it ends. Back to green at Spa, 10 minutes to go. And the DKR engineering car from third dropping down the order. That leaves the Algar Pro car of Alex Lynn in third. Cool Racing's Rochette de Geras leads from Dragon Speed's white and blue of Sebastian Montoya. Busy racing all the way down the field. There's Alessio Picariello with the blue nose leading in GTE Pro from the yellow Porsche of Matteo Cairoli. Lead Ferrari is Formula Racing in third with Nick Nielsen. Up the hill they stream. Still trying to work some heat into the tyres and brakes. Race leader Rashad de Geras inside the final 10 minutes, but Sebastian Montoya lurking. So too is Matteo Cairoli in the yellow iron Lynx Porsche. Chasing Alessio Picariello up the hill. Through International in LMP3, making a move for third on RLR M Sport. Through they go. Cool racing lead the class from Inter Europol. Just a little up the order. And in GTE, Proton and Iron Lynx, Porsche 1 2, Formula Racing in third for Ferrari, Proton fourth ahead of AF Corsa's Ferrari and the Kessel Racing Ferrari in sixth. The best of the Astons now in seventh. Eight minutes to go and just over as they get to the line and into the pit lane come the leaders. So Cool Racing and Dragon Speed both needed fuel. What about Algarve Pro? What about the Cool Racing 37 car? What about Racing Team Turkey? Hey, of course. Sir. Well, Racing Team Turkey under pressure. Louis Delatraz, the red car on the inside. Maggio of active the air for A of Corsa trying to go around the outside and get something on the exit. Quick splash for the 47 Cool Racing car. 
And the same from Montoya, and another car off in the gravel. Jean-Baptiste Lahaye. Five, four, three, two, one. Full course yellow removed, full course yellow removed. One to go at the line as we go back from full course yellow and look again at Mathieu Vaxivier around the outside of Louis Delachaz. They, of course, are getting the place back up to third ahead of Racing Team Turkey. That is second in Pro Am. Algar Pro, blue and black, leading the race. Cool Racing in second. This is how close it is. Last lap flag will come out now. One to go in Spa. A great opportunity for Algar Pro to put this one away. Marty Jakobsen chasing for cool racing, but Alex Lynn is a very cool customer. Here's the battle for the lead in LMGTE. The Proton Porsche, Alessio Picariello. Behind him is Matteo Cairoli in the Iron Lynx Porsche, looking to come the long way round the outside. Door shut in his face. Final lap for everyone. So close after all these safety cars have bunched and re-bunched the field. Alex Lynn into the bus stop for the 88th and final time. Algar Pro are going to win it in Spa. What a crazy race and what a well-driven race. <laughs> they were in it right from the very start. Pole position to victory for Algar Pro. Cool Racing win Pro-Am and a second overall ahead of AF Corsa and Team Turkey. Cool Racing win in LMP3 and Proton competition from pole take victory in GTE. What a result for Algar Pros. Kiffin Simpson, James Allen and Alex Lynn. It's sometimes you win a race on, on pace and overtaking and sometimes you win it through strategy and, uh, and quick thinking and I think today it was the latter that won us today's race. Um, so I'm super proud of the team and, uh, and everyone at Algar Pro Racing. A huge result for Stu and Sam Cox's small family outfit Algar Pro. They claim victory second and third overall and first and second in Pro-Am. Cool Racing 37 and the 83 AF Corsa crew. More champagne moments for Algar Pro. They topped the overall LMP2 podium with the 65 Panis car that caused all the carnage early on in second. Cool Racing's 47 crew in third. And that means that Algar Pro now lead the team's trophy as we head into the double season finale. Appropriately enough, on the Algarve in Portimao. After an up and down race, our LMP2 Pro-Am winners were Cool Racing's crew, Alex Kwangi, Nico Lapierre, and Malte Jakobsen. Like I felt like we had quite a good pace and was able to keep the gap down to the APR car. But then at the first pit stop after the safety car, as we stopped earlier to put me in the car, we had to fuel for a few seconds longer. So I lost the position to the Algarve car, but we managed to keep the position, but it was super tight with the restarts and Louis right behind and so on. But we, I had a lot of fun out there. Well, the cool racing result did not change. Second place at the line, AF Corsa picked up a four second penalty for accelerating too soon out of a full course yellow. And Racing Team Turkey, a two second penalty for the same offense. That means Racing Team Turkey is reclassified as second in the race, AF Corsa as fourth. And that means that AF Corsa is now just four points behind Racing Team Turkey in the LMP2 Pro-Am standings. The race in LMP3 was as crazy as it was in all the other classes. Vichy went to the number 17 cool racing crew, Adrian Keeler, Marcus Siebert and Alejandro Garcia. The most crazy uh, race of all season. Uh, at the end, it helped us a lot the safety cars, you know, and all, all the crashes because we were quite tight with uh, with uh, our gasoline. But yeah, yeah, at the end, it helped us. We had the luck on our side, and yeah, we we brought it home, and this is perfect for the championship. I think we are now even two races um, uh, like on an advantage against the other competitors. So we are just happy now, and we're just now gonna enjoy our race win with my two teammates and. Marcos did an amazing job. Behind the Cool Racing Trio into Europol's 13 car finished in second. Euro International from Pole finished third. They lie fourth in the points, but Cool Racing have a monumental advantage 
heading into the final two races in Portimao. Our LMGT winners started on pole and finished first. Surely then it was plain sailing for the Proton Competition trio, Ryan Hardwick, Zach Rubichon and Alessio Picariello. It was a really interesting race with a lot of uh, fuel saving uh, fights and uh, I enjoyed it fully and at the end fighting with uh, Matteo Cairoli was the best I could ask for because he's a good friend of mine and in my opinion he's one of the best drivers around here so uh, yeah I enjoyed it very much. Post race, Proton's number 16 crew were penalised 10 seconds for accelerating too early out of a full course yellow zone, handing victory to the 60 Iron Lynx team, second place Formula Racing down to third Proton. And that means that they are tied at the top of the championship, Proton and Iron Lynx on equal points. And with two races left, there's still everything to play for in Portugal. It will be the grandest of grand finales in Portimao, a double race weekend to finish the ELMS for 2023.